टुडे टॉपिक इज पार्टिकल इन ए बॉक्स और समटाइम दिस इज कॉल्ड ए पार्टिकल इन एन इनफाइनाइट पोटेंशियल वेल दिस इज एन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस रोडिंगर इक्वेशन वेयर ए पार्टिकल इज ट्रैप्ड इन ए पोटेंशियल वेल द आइडिया इज वी हैव दिस वन डायमेंशनल पोटेंशियल वेल दिस इज अवर एक्स एक्सिस डायमेंशन ऑफ दिस वेल एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू कैपिटल एल वेयर वी इज इन फाइनाइट एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू एल दिस इज अवर पार्टिकल इन साइड दिस वेल सो वी हैव टू यूज हियर द टाइम इंडिपेंडेंस रोडिंगर इक्वेशन बिकॉज पोटेंशियल इज इक्वल टू जीरो इन साइड द वेल इट मीन्स दिस पार्टिकल इज नॉट बाउंड इट इज फ्री टू मूव हियर एंड देयर सो टू फाइंड द आइगन स्टेट्स आइगन फंक्शन ऑफ दिस पार्टिकल एंड द आइगन वैल्यूज ऑफ दिस यूजिंग दिस रोडिंगर इक्वेशन दैट इज द टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट रोडिंगर इक्वेशन वी हैव टू यूज सो टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट रोडिंगर इक्वेशन आई हैव टू यूज टू कैलकुलेट द आइगन फंक्शन एंड आइगन वैल्यूज दैट इज डी टू साई अपोन डी एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस टू एम अपोन एच क्रॉस स्क्वायर ई माइनस वी साई इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज अवर फर्स्ट इक्वेशन एंड दिस इज टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट ए टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट रोडिंग इक्वेशन मीन्स पोटेंशियल इज इंडिपेंडेंट फ्रॉम द टाइम सो देर इज नो फंक्शन ऑफ द टाइम रिलेटेड टू द पोटेंशियल सो we have assumed here v is equal to 0 that means particle is free free particle there is no boundation on the particle but uh, to find the all eigen functions uh, related to this particle which is free to move here and there in this well so i am using this boundary condition that because this particle uh, we can observe within this dimension so psi x that is the wave function associated with this particle is equal to 0 why it is 0 because this particle cannot be found at x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to l the probability of finding this particle only within the dimension of this potential well so psi x is the wave function that is related to this particle is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 so you cannot find out this particle at this position at x is equal to 0 and similarly for x is equal to Well, these two are boundary conditions where the wave function is equal to zero, or you can say that the probability of this particle at these points is equal to zero. So when I am putting the value v is equal to zero in this Schrödinger equation, which is time independent, that means potential energy is not a function of time, then this equation becomes. d to psi upon dx square plus 2m h cross square v is equal to zero and this e psi is equal to zero. Uh, this is second order differential equation of this wave function. So I can assume that this 2m e h cross e square is equal to k square so this is 
I am assuming that k square is equal to 2me upon h cross square where k is the wave vector. So this equation becomes d2 psi upon dx square plus k square psi is equal to 0. This is equation number 2. So the Schrodinger equations becomes in this form which is a second order differential equation and one can find out the solution of this equation. So by solving this equation we can find out the eigenfunction. So you can say wave function associated with this particle. Now the solution of this equation is psi is equal to I have this equation d2 psi dx square plus k square psi is equal to 0. The solution of this second order differential equation will be psi is equal to psi j function of only x that is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx this is equation number 3 where a and b are these a and b are arbitrary constants these are constants and we have to find out the value of these constant using this boundary condition now our wave function uh, is equal to 0 this psi x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to L also so I am putting this value using this boundary condition at x is equal to 0 we know psi x is equal to 0 it means this psi x is equal to 0 a sin 0 plus b cos 0 the sum of these two terms is equal to 0 here sin 0 is equal to 0 that means a is not equal to 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 so it means b is equal to 0 so uh, one can conclude here that uh, the constant b is equal to 0 so now for this a x is equal to l this wave function this is our first boundary condition and second boundary condition that is at x is equal to l and again this wave function is equal to 0 so putting this value in the equation number 3 we get psi x is equal to 0 a sin k l where x is equal to l and plus b cos k x now b is equal to 0 and this cos k l so this is understood that this term is equal to 0 and I have only this one a sin k l so a sin k l is equal to 0 and from this relation we know that a could not be 0 so I have sin k l is equal to 0 so it means this condition will satisfy only when this KL will be equal to n pi. So I am using this 
release him in the sign KL is equal to 0 sign KL is equal to 0 this condition will satisfy only when this KL is equal to n pi for a given value of n G, G, 1, 2, 3 and so on sin n pi will be equal to 0 so kl is equal to n pi and I can conclude that value of k will be equal to n pi upon l so this is the value of wave vector where n is the number of the state pi is a constant l is the dimension of the value this is L. Now I, I have to put this value of K in uh, the formula which I have used here in equation number 2 K square is equal to uh, 2 Me upon H cross square. So I have to find out the value of E in terms of this K that becomes 2me upon h cross e square and now I have to put this value again in here so it is equal to n square pi square upon l square so e is equal to n square pi square h cross e square upon 2 m l square so this is the energy value for this particle now to make to simplify it we know h bar is equal to h upon 2 pi so putting this value here this becomes n square pi square h square upon 4 pi square and 4 into 2 8 8 pi square into this m and l square pi square cancel out and we have only this n square h square upon 8 m l square this is the energy eigen value for any state n n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on so this e n is equal to n square h square upon 8 m l square this energy is directly proportional to the square of n and inversely proportional to the square of l <coughs> where h at m these are constant so I am writing this formula here for the energy E n is equal to n square h square upon 8 m l square. So I can find out the eigenvalue of the particle, free particle that is electron right now in our case in any state correspond to n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 and so on and these are for n is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 this e1 is equal to 1 h square upon 8 m l square n is equal to 2 this is equal to e2 is equal to 4 h square upon 8 m l square when n is equal to 3 for the third state that becomes 9 h square upon 8 m l square so this time this is 4 times of e1 here 9 times of E1 so ratio between these E1, E2, E3 and so on is 1, 4, 9, 16 like this one so 1, 4, 9 
this is the ratio between this energy level E1, E2, E3 and uh, one thing which uh, one can notice that these energies values are like this one if this is E1 this is E2 this is E3 the energy gap between these uh, levels are not uniform and uh, the values are different so these are uh, discrete energy levels basically uh, which you can say that uh, these energy levels are quantized discrete energy levels are quantized so now the next point is related to the wave function we have find out the value of this k that is n pi upon l now putting this value in the wave function of the particle that we have defined in terms of a constant this psi which is a function of x is equal to a sin kx now I'm putting the value of k here so it becomes a sin n pi x upon n this wave function is not normalized what is the meaning of normalization because this uh, a uh, is equivalent to the amplitude of the wave in a simple simply in simple harmonic uh, motion we define the displacement y is equal to a sin omega t plus kx or if i write in terms of exponential term this becomes y is equal to a e uh, iota omega t minus kx so here when i compare this wave function with this uh, simple displacement of a particle in terms of the wave this a is equivalent to the amplitude so right now i am saying that this wave function is not normalized so i have to make it normalize what is the condition of normalization normalization condition is minus infinity to plus infinity the integration limit and mode of psi square that is wave function I have considered here one dimensional situation so I am writing dx it should be equal to 1 if the wave function satisfy this condition then the wave function will be normalized so with a simple example you can see that uh, a wave function is shown by this way suppose this is psi 1 and this is picture A the other example of the wave function is like this and there is no a small part of this wave function outside the well so there are this is psi 1 one example this is also psi 1 another example so in both the cases you can say that this picture is right without knowing more about uh, the normalization condition so this wave function actually does not provide complete information about the system this wave function is not normalized within the boundary but this wave function is normalized within the boundary of the system so the purpose of normalization uh, for any wave function is to bound the, that system within the boundary and here our boundaries are start from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to n it means i have to write these limits x is equal to 0 to x is equal to n so i have to integrate this integration within the limit of 0 to l then i will find out the value of this normalization constant this a is known as normalization constant and this condition is known as normalization condition so when i put this value of psi x in this equation 
so I found the result for normalization constant A that is equal to under root 2 upon L directly I am writing this value here you can solve this integration by putting these values i x that becomes a square sin square k x dx is equal to 1 within the limit of 0 to l. So you can simplify this integration by making using, uh, using that uh, cos 2x formula and you will get this result a is equal to square root 2 by l. Now I am putting this value of a that is a normalization constant in the v function psi x so psi x is equal to square root 2 upon l sin n pi x upon n so this is normalized v function for any state n is equal to 1 you can write it for 1 as uh, psi 1, psi 2 and psi 3 so now we have the eigenvalue of the particle for different energy states and the eigen function which is now normalized V function so if I have to find the find out the probability of any particle I can use this normalized V function because without uh, normalized function you cannot find out the probability distribution of the particle inside the potential well or the box. So this is our psi nx under root 2 upon L sin n pi x upon L this is normalized wave function what is the probability distribution probability we can define between the limits x1 is equal to 0 for an example and this is x2 so probability within the dimension from x1 to x2 can be represented by this is equal to mod of psi square dx within the limit of x1 to x2 so I can find out the probability of the particle within this uh, dimension if my wave function is not uh, if my wave function is normalized but if this wave function is not normalized we cannot find out exactly the probability distribution of this particle within this box so this is the formula of probability dis uh, uh, distribution now next point is after discussing our uh, discussion about the wave function energy eigenvalue one more thing that is related to the wavelength the wavelength we define with this distance this is wavelength in simple in a very simple language we define this drop and crest is equal to lambda that is wavelength of a simple harmonic motion so lambda uh, this is our lambda we know this is a microscopic system the, and uh, a de Broglie wave is associated with this particle that can be defined by lambda is equal to h upon p where p is the momentum of this particle lambda is the wavelength so if suppose I have to find out the wave function of uh, if, for an example if suppose I have to find out the momentum of this particle in different different energy states so I have to find out the momentum of this particle in uh, energy E1 state, energy state E2, energy state E3 what will be the momentum of this particle because I know the this is the lowest energy level and this is first excited state, this is second excited state it means these uh, if I am increasing above side so this is the higher energy level as compared to this one 
so e3 is at higher energy as compared to the e1 and e2 so all the electron which exist in uh, higher energy levels their energy automatically will be higher as compared to the lower state so the moment obviously the momentum of the particle will be higher so now my purpose is to find the momentum of those particles or in this particular situation for this particle so what will be the momentum of the particle because i know the potential is equal to zero within the well so that particle will have only the kinetic energy so i have defined already this total energy so this total energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy but potential energy is equal to g zero so the particles will have only the kinetic energy so kinetic energy of any particle we can define with this formula p square upon 2m which is 1 by 2m v square basically this is our kinetic energy so this kinetic energy is equal to this total energy of the particle why because potential is equal to zero that particle have only kinetic energy and that is equal to the total energy so i am putting this value equal to this one so n square h square upon 8 m l square is equal to this p square upon 2n and further i can put this value of p from here that is equal to h upon lambda p is equal to h upon lambda that coming from the de broglie wavelength concept so p square is equal to h square upon lambda square this is h square upon lambda square into 2m now simplify it this term and this term so h square cancel out m cancel out and this 2 is 4 so i have this n square 4 l square this is n square 4 l square is equal to 1 upon lambda square here so this can be written further lambda square is equal to 4 l square upon n square or you can write this lambda is equal to 2 l upon n so from here i can conclude that lambda is equal to 2l upon n so i have only these variables l and these states there are number of states so n is equal to 1 correspond to the ground state n is equal to 2 is the first excited state remember this point when you use e2 that will be the first excited state this e2 is the first excited state this one e1 is the ground state so now i have found out find out that lambda is equal to 2l upon n where l is the dimension of the well and n are the number of state for n is equal to 1 lambda is equal to 2l n is equal to 2 for this state lambda will be equal to l and when n is equal to 3 for this state the lambda the de broglie wavelength which is associated with this particle will be equal to 2l upon 3 so i have already defined that wavelength concept this is the wavelength now n is equal to 
when I am considering n is equal to 1 that time lambda is equal to 2L this is lambda and it should be equal to the 2L but we have only L so I have this for n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 lambda is equal to L that is this one now this is the total wavelength and this is equal to L for n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 lambda is equal to 2 L upon 3 that means this is lambda L and this is again L by 3 so you can see here this point and this point L by 3 plus L by 3 plus L by 3 here L by 2 L by 2 this is L by so these are basically the waveform uh, of the wave function on the other hand so by using the de Broglie wave concept uh, we can define the uh, wavelength associated uh, with this uh, uh, ground state first excited state second excited state and so on now this was the idea related to the wavelength of the matter wave associated with this free particle now suppose I have to find out the momentum of this particle in this energy state or in this energy state or in this particular energy state so as I have mentioned already that uh, En that is equal to N square H square upon 8 ML square is equal to P square upon 2M so this P is square will be equal to M cancel out 2 4 this becomes N square H square upon 4 L square so P is equal to N H upon 2 L so if I have to find out the momentum of the particle of this free particle correspond to this state then it will be P1 so P1 is equal to H upon 2L N is equal to 1 that ground state and H is Planck constant 2L L is the dimension so momentum of this particle free particle in this state will be equal to H upon 2L momentum of this particle in second state will be correspond n is equal to 2 to h upon 2l and 2 to cancel out so p2 is equal to h upon l and similarly for the third n is equal to 3 so 3 by 2 h upon l will be p3 so by this way one can find out uh, the momentum of the particle in different different energy states so this free particle in a potential box through this uh, we have seen uh, both the ideas the application of the Schrodinger equation and the idea of the uh, Broglie wavelength so by using this concept uh, we make all these picture clear so this free particle in terms of energy state E1, E2, E3 these are discrete that means energy states are quantized this is the normalized wave function by which one can find out the probability of the particle and the wavelength associated with this particle in different different energy states momentum of this particle in correspond to 1 2 and 3 so this was the idea thank you